The product that you choose to sell may be the make it or break it for your business. I'm John from Vera Me Commerce, and today I'll be showing you how we consistently find our six and seven figure winning products. It's the first step to starting a successful dropshipping business, and I'll be going over it step by step. So follow along closely. Let's get to it. So what does a winning product look like? I think there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to what a winning product looks like. Having done over seven figures in ad spend, testing various products in a wide range of niches, we've come up with a checklist of things to look out for. Basically, your product must satisfy all of the following. One, it has a problem solving factor or wow factor trait. Two, it can be sold for at least $30. And three, it can be sold with margins of at least 250 to 300%. Now, let me explain why we picked these criteria. When it comes to the types of winning products, we've identified two different types problem solving products and wow factor products. The problem solving products are those products that address a specific customer pain point or issue. Think of the infamous posture brace, the electric mosquito trapper, a jar opener, etc. Wow factor products on the other hand are typically lifestyle purchases. These are products that have intrinsic characteristics that impress the audience and create a desire to buy. Examples may include clothing, a moon lamp, jewelry, and gadgets. We have had success with both types of products Ultimately, how big of a winner a product ends up being will largely come down to the quality of your marketing. However, if you're just starting off, we suggest that you focus on looking for problem-solving products. It is typically easier to come up with good marketing angles and content. Next, you want to make sure that your product can sell for at least $30. In the past, it was possible to get $5 to $10 CPPs at scale for low and mid-ticket products. But for a number of reasons, such as competition and algorithm changes, this is now almost impossible. You are much better off having a healthy AOV coupled with good margins, 250 to 300%, and this will help you remain profitable, especially at scale. We recommend staying somewhere in the low to mid range if you're just getting started. High ticket items can also work, but will generally require more elaborate marketing funnels and creative, as well as good customer support. We've also found that it's more expensive to get these types of products up and running. This is about all you need to understand to recognize potential winners. So let's apply this knowledge and jump right into the system. The first step is to pick a place or method where you can find a product. There's a whole bunch of ways to do this, ranging from AliExpress browsing to page research tools. And the truth is that any method you use can work. And it is not the most important aspect of the process by any means. But if you would like a comprehensive list of potential ways to find products, I went ahead and created a detailed document that I posted on our Facebook group. So if you haven't already, feel free to join to get access. For demonstration purposes, I'll be using one of the most underrated product research methods out there, the free version of Ecom Hunt. Believe it or not, Ecom Hunt is actually a fantastic tool for finding winning products. I've been able to find at least 10 products on there that I know people have scaled to seven figures with dozens to six figures. The secret to picking out winners though lies in how you actually use the tool. What most people do is look at the first page and pick out a product there because it's new and trending and sure that could work. But what we found works best is going back a few years and looking around there. You'll either end up finding a product that was a previous winner or has not yet been tested. In the case of winning products, usually previous winners died out because too many people sold that product and exhausted out the audience. And so, during the downtime, the Facebook algorithm is constantly adjusting and moving people around from different audiences, as well as introducing new people to them. So if you were targeting people who liked hunting two years ago, doing so now could potentially yield very different results because of how the machine learning algorithm is currently optimized. Even if the demographic hasn't changed much, the people the algorithm picks out will. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and take this travel pack over here and use it as an example for the next steps. Qualifying the product. Now that we've found a product we're interested in, we need to qualify the product and make sure it's something we won't regret selling. For a product to qualify as a candidate, it must have all the characteristics of a winning product, which we listed earlier, and also should have two more things, which are the AliExpress reviews of this product are good, and the Amazon reviews of this product are also good. The reason for these two additional conditions is primarily to make sure you have happy customers. If you're selling crappy products, sooner or later it will catch up to you one way or another. Payment processors are now cracking down on dropshippers with high chargeback rates, and Facebook has begun to hand out feedback scores much more quickly than before. I have seen plenty of people scale products and resulted in business manager bans, payment processors blacklisting, and BBB complaints. The rule of thumb for 2019 and beyond is that you want to make sure your customers are happy. Trust me, it will benefit you in more ways than one. 
So let's apply these rules to the travel pack and see if it qualifies. For the first rule, I think that this product will fall into both the problem solving and wow factor categories. If you've ever traveled, you know how annoying it can be when you're trying to find something in your bag but are unable to do so. This travel pack is built specifically with those problems in mind. In regards to the wow factor, I think this product can have a synthesized wow factor with a great video showing off the functionality and utility of the bag. For the second rule, this product costs $37 on AliExpress. Although I suspect that this is extremely overpriced, if you take a look at Alibaba, you can find it on there for around $11. So I suspect you can get the price down a lot if you work with an agent. In any case, I could see people paying anywhere from $60 to $100 for this product. For the third rule, to calculate our markup, we need to know the cost of goods sold, or COGS for short. COGS is equal to the cost you're paying for the product when acquiring it from AliExpress or an agent. Since we're not going to be using AliExpress prices, I will go ahead and estimate the COGS at $25 for this product. The Ecamm Hunt listing actually showed it at that price, but it looks like this vendor decided to hike the prices up a ton because the product was doing so well. With a COGS of $25, I would sell this at around $65 to $75, which leaves you with a 2.5 to 3 times markup, satisfying this particular rule. For the fourth rule, the AliExpress reviews for this product looks good, and the fact that it has a decent order volume is also promising. I don't see anything concerning here that would prevent me from going forward to the next step. For the fifth rule, the Amazon reviews for this product also looks good. Looks like the supplier even managed to make it to Amazon's choice. One thing to know here, if your product has negative reviews, take note of what those issues are, and determine if they could be problematic for your business. If some of the issues are things you may be able to control, think about ways to do so. For the travel pack, it looks like the few negative reviews pertains to the zipper breaking or getting jammed after only a few uses. This can likely be avoided through quality inspection prior to shipment and by having a generous return and reship policy to handle cases that may slip through the cracks. If you've made it this far, you are now ready to move on to step 3, which is ordering your product for evaluation. These days, we strongly recommend ordering the product before launching your store. Once again, the goal is to make sure your customers will have a positive experience. And the best thing you can do to ensure this is to inspect the product and vet it yourself. If you're based in the US like we are, we recommend buying your product from Amazon with two-day prime shipping, if available. The benefit here is that you can return a product within 30 days of receiving it for any reason, so long as you don't damage it. Returns are usually free as well, you just drop them off at an Amazon pickup point near you, depending on which state you live in. For people based outside the US who can't get their products in a day or two, Although we strongly recommend you purchase the product on AliExpress and wait until it arrives, you may choose to either skip this step or order it and actually run your store before it arrives. This is risky, especially if your product has mixed reviews, but a combination of good product reviews and common sense on your end will decrease the likelihood of disaster if you choose to go this way. Alright, I've gone ahead and ordered the product off Amazon with free 2-day prime shipping, and once it arrives, I will walk you guys through the step 4 of the process, which is evaluating the product yourself. Okay, so it looks like the travel pack came in today, we're ready to go through step 4 here. When looking at any product that you order, you will want to keep a few things in mind. Is this product high quality, and does it function as expected? Is the product easy to damage through regular use? Are there any potential hazards you need to consider? And put yourself in the shoes of your prospect, what things would you look for in this type of product? Are there any shortcomings that you think will be detrimental to your product's success? Ultimately, there will also be more specific things to look out for depending on your product, and good common sense is all you need here. Just think about things from the perspective of your customer. Now, let's go ahead and apply these things to the travel pack. So number one, the travel pack seems to be really quite sturdy and feels much more higher quality than I had anticipated. The material is relatively thick and something that I think will hold up to the test of time. It has several pockets and compartments for organization, and the zippers seem to be working fine. I would say that there's nothing here out of the ordinary and it gets the job done. For number two, I think that the construction and overall material of the bag will tolerate general wear and tear. I put some dumbbells in the main compartment to see if it can withstand more significant loads and it seems to be holding up just well. For number three, this product doesn't seem to be potentially hazardous, it's just a simple travel bag, no sharp parts, batteries, or anything of that nature. For number four, as someone who travels frequently, I think there is a definite market for this product. It offers organization and accessibility at a reasonable price. While I think some of the zippers could be higher quality and some of the pockets could be moved, overall this product is great. 
I'd say this is one that qualifies as a product that we can actually test. At this point, if you find the product won't cut it, it's time to hang up the towel and start over. Otherwise, let's move on to step number five, which is evaluating the market potential and launching a store. If the product passed the previous tests, it's time to come up with some creative angles. The reality of the situation is that any product can work regardless of how saturated and what niche it is in. It all comes down to two things, a good creative and the right audience. If you want to know what goes into making a good creative, check out our free course video that we uploaded onto our YouTube channel. Typically, if a product has made it this far down our checklist, you should not have much of an issue getting things going. It just takes a little bit of creativity and work to find your winning ad. Once you have an idea of the marketing angles and features you want to display, you should go ahead and set up your store. If you want an example of what a good store looks like, go take a look at the free course video I keep on mentioning. In this video, we show you guys a store that did over $500,000 in revenue and exactly what a good store layout looks like. Alright, so some last words of wisdom here. Keep in mind that you may not find a winner every single time. It takes practice to become adept at finding winning products and even we don't have a 100% success rate with the products we test despite all the experiences that we've had. Just keep testing and use your data to make the right decisions. That's about it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. At this point, you should be able to get out there and start testing products until you find your winner. As a reminder, I will be including the PDF with the various ways to find products on our Facebook group. So if you haven't already, go ahead and join to the link in the description. Also, make sure to subscribe so that you get notified every time we release a new video. That's it for today. Leave your questions down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.